Hey nerds, Todd Simmons coming back at you with some more Tottermation. Uh, today I want to do a follow-up video uh, that was actually a request uh, as a follow-up to my longest video yet that uh, shows you how to uh, copy a private repo. Uh, in that video, I showed you how to copy the private repo to the actual controller, uh, being the, the Ansible controller that you had. Um, now the request is, well, that's great, but how do you copy it to a remote host? Uh, so in today's video, we're going to talk about doing it to a remote host. So I've got everything on my screen a little magnified so it's easier to see for you. Uh, but if you're having any issues seeing it, let me know. Uh, and you know, anything that you want to know about, or if you see an error in my videos or a way to make it better, you know, please let me know. Uh, really enjoying doing them. Uh, but uh, certainly would like to get uh, input from anybody on what to do next or how to improve. Uh, and in this particular series, we're talking about Ansible Automation Platform. Uh, used to be called Ansible Tower. Uh, and then the free version is AWX. So everything that I'm going to be doing here uh, can be done in a GUI version of Ansible. Um, so we need to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I want to do is we're going to have to add a host to an inventory uh, and we're going to have to create an inventory to house that host because uh, we're not just doing it on the controller anymore. We're actually going to put this information uh, somewhere else. Uh, so let's get started there with adding a new inventory. We just go to the hamburger and the resources and we go to inventories. So we're going to add the new inventory. So just add inventory. And I'm going to call this private remote for the name. Uh, the organization, I do like to use the organization. Select your organization. Uh, for your labels, we're going to just call it remotes. So we're going to be able to use this label if we if we want to call everything uh, with inside this inventory. Uh, it makes it much, much easier to use the inventory. If you're, if you're used to, say, the inventory file, uh, this would be what was in the uh, square back brackets. After that, we're going to save it and we have our new inventory called private remote. Uh, next thing that we want to do is we want to add a new host because uh, we do have that new host and we're going to add it to the inventory that we just created. So we can go to the hamburger again uh, and we can go to hosts. It's going to give us all of our hosts. For this one, we're going to click add. Uh, and for add, I'm going to call this my private remote. Uh, and then we're going to add it to an inventory. So we're going to look for the inventory that we just created, which was private remote. So we're going to select that inventory. We're going to add this host. Now, very important. Um, we're going to at least have to give it one variable because uh, Ansible or the uh, Ansible playbook, uh, it has to know what address to reach it at. So we're going to have to at least add one variable, and that's going to be Ansible underscore host. Need to have the quotes and then the colon and then the actual IP. So mine is 192.168.20.223. Um, this is going to depend on your device, but that needs to be the IP address of that device. And then we click save and that's it. So we've added the host um, and we've assigned it to the inventory that we just added. Pretty simple, uh, but very, very important. Now, the next step, because we're working with Git uh, and we want to do it securely, if we're going to copy uh, from this host, or I'm sorry, to this new remote host, uh, we're going to make sure that it authenticates Git properly. Uh, and the way that we want to do it is through SSH. So I, I'm going to walk through that real quick. But if you want a detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough, I'm going to, to put a link down below that shows you another video that you can go to that gives you the exact step-by-step -step process uh, to SSH to GitHub. And this works from any device, whether it's the Ansible controller or whether it's a remote host. So the first thing that we need to do uh, is go to that remote host, which I already have the window open. Uh, there's a screen on how to do the key generation. Now I'm going to show you that my key has already been generated. Um, so I'm just going to uh, go to that directory and then to just show you that I've got uh, keys generated. And the key that I'm looking for is this one right here, this id ed255.19. This is kind of the recommended 
Uh, well, you can do RSA keys. There's a lot of different keys that you can do, but this is the ED255 version of the key. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my public key because my public key is what I need to put on Git. So I'm just going to do a cat ID underscore and then look at the dot pub. That is my public key. So I want to copy all of this. I'm going to copy it. Uh, and then I'm going to go to Git. So inside your Git, when you get in there, uh, you know, you'll come to your main screen. We just want to hit the down arrow uh, next to your actual icon up there at the top. We're going to go to settings. Uh, after settings, uh, we're going to go down and find the SSH and GPC keys. Uh, if you've already done this, you can skip forward. Uh, but for any device that you're going to want to copy your, your private repo, from Git to, you're going to want to put this SSH key in there. Uh, so I'm just going to do a new SSH key. Uh, and I like to make sure that my keys kind of match my host so I know what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to call this private remote, just like I did for my host name. Uh, authentication key. And then we're just going to um, copy and paste that in there. And let's just make sure that that matches perfectly, and it does. And I don't like that when I copied and pasted, it didn't put everything on uh, the same line. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no line breaks, and there are no line breaks in there. Um, so when I put that in there, and it's probably just because I got the window so small, um, if I make the window bigger, it does remove the line breaks. So now I'm going to say, add that SSH key. And it's going to want me to verify, since I do use multi-factor authentication on everything. And I'm going to put this in and verify it, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I validated uh, through uh, MFA that I was authorized to do that. And then you'll see I've got the new SSH keys, and it's never been used. And, and we want to double check this, right? We want to make sure that after we run our playbook, uh, through the Ansible, that it actually does show uh, that it got used. So after we did the key generation, uh, we added the public key. I guess I should have uh, forwarded that slide a little quicker this time, uh, but I did not. But there's the instructions there uh, on the screen uh, that show you, once again, if you look at that other video uh, that I, I, I have, it shows you step by step in a, a much uh, more detailed fashion uh, than what it was that we were doing uh, than what I'm doing now. So the next thing that we want to do uh, is we either want to update the playbook uh, that we used previously um, to show where it's going to go, uh, or you can create a new one, um, right? So we're going to run this from Git. So I'm going to put the playbook in a uh, GitHub private repo, but I'm going to run the playbook from uh, Ansible Automation Platform. So if you don't know how to link your VS Code and here's my VS Code. If you don't know how to link VS Code to your Git, uh, I've got another video that shows you how to do that. Uh, so go ahead and go to that video if you're like, hey man, how'd you do that? So uh, what I'm going to do is, is look right here at this Git clone remote uh, in my playbook. And it's going to allow me to uh, make this update. So uh, with creating the playbook, Notice that it's pretty much all the same before. The difference is we're going to have to change this host. And this host uh, is going to need to match uh, whatever you used to identify that particular host. Or you can use the groups that you use. So you could use remotes here or the individual host. Uh, I am going to use the individual host just to make sure uh, I called that private underscore remote, just to verify. So I'm going to go in and now call this, rename it to private underscore remote. So that's where it's going to call. Now, here's a really, really important part is this delegate to piece of it. You have to actually tell it where you want this done. So you can use this playbook for multiple servers to do this if you have multiple servers. Uh, but you want to make sure instead of using the individual host name, uh, you use that label that you use. So I'm going to go back and just say private underscore host again, since that's what I'm using. 
and it's not host, I called it private underscore remote. So a little typo there would cause you a big problem, I promise you. Okay, so I am going to save this. And because I'm connected to my Git, as you can see, it's inside main. It's coming back and saying, hey, that file's been modified. Uh, so afterwards, you, you are going to have to update I'm just going to say I updated the host. I'm going to sync. Once those changes are done, taking a little while to sync on this one. And there it is, it's done. So I can just go back to my file list. Uh, so now I'm doing my secure login. I'm going to copy it to temp Python collection on that remote directory uh, from the previous video, uh, which I'll have linked as well. Uh, that walks you step by step on how to create this very, very important secure key uh, to copy that. Um, we can use the same code or the, the, the same playbook, I should say. Uh, the only difference is you want to specify it's going to be on a different host and where it's actually going to delegate to. All right. Uh, so once uh, that, that playbook is created, now let's go create a new project. Uh, because I did change the playbook name. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new project for that. And we're going to go back to Ansible. And from Ansible, we'll go into projects. We're going to add the project. The name is going to be um, copy private to remote. And just to make it easy to look at, the organization, if you use them, uh, the execution environment, I typically use the 2.9 version, uh, and then source control type, this is going to have to be Git. Now, if you don't know how to link to your Git, once again, I've, I've showed you in past videos, but I'll, I'll send a link here, but you are going to need to use this source control URL, uh, which once again, I've got another video that shows you step by step how to do every aspect of that. Uh, so if you need that, go ahead and go there. But real quick, to get your source control, uh, it's very simple. You just go into your repositories. And I'm looking for Python collection. And then I'm going to use the code. I'm going to use the SSH. Just copy that. I'm going to put it in my source control URL. And I'm going to call this out of main. And my source control credential is my GitHub SCM. And then I am going to save it. Now, as soon as you save this, it's going to go through and check the status of the job. So it, <clears throat> basically, it's just going to make sure that it can log in uh, and get to that Git. Uh, no pun intended. So we want to see successful. If you don't see successful, it's not going to know where your playbooks are. It's not going to know where your files are. Uh, so unless you have successful here, uh, you cannot continue. Okay, so now we've got a project uh, and that's going to work. So the next step after creating a project would be creating a template. Um, but there's one thing that we do need to add in here uh, before we actually create the template. You want to make sure that as we've got this remote host that we've SSH'd into over here, so we know that we have credentials on it, but you have to make sure that you put those credentials inside Ansible Automation Platform as well. So if you haven't done so already, when you go into credentials here, you're going to want to add a credential. Uh, if you've already got the credential, you don't need to do it. Uh, so when you add the credential, you're going to put the name of the device and then the description. Uh, so I'm just going to call this uh, for right now private host. And then it's organization. Okay. And then you would select the credential type. Now, the credential type that you want to use for any SSH is always going to be a machine type. Now, I already have this credential in here, so I don't want to create it again. But you would put the username and password here. And let me show you the credential actually that I have. Uh, so I've already got this credential here. And if I look at edit, 
this is the screen that you would have. So you would put, of course, the name, the username, your password. We're going to encrypt that. If there was any private key or anything that you would need to do, uh, you would put that in here. So this is the credential that's specifically for the remote host or remote hosts that you're using. Uh, since I've already got that in here, uh, then we can move over into creating our template. So in our template, we're going to add the template. And I've actually got this template already, so let me just show you, but I'm going to add a piece to it. So after you add the template, then you'll just name it. Uh, so I've got mine, copy, private repo to remote. I don't use the description. The job type is going to be run. The inventory is going to be private remote. Um, the project, very important. So we'll see that as we look here, uh, when we go to project, sorry, it's the project that we just created and ran successfully. Then we look in our playbook. We're going to have a lot of options in here for playbook. Uh, the one that we're working on is this git underscore clone remote. We want to select that. So when you first create your playbook, you're not going to have the credentials assigned. So the first credential that you want to assign is going to be the private repo login that we've already covered in the previous video. Select that. That's the first step. Now, this is really important. Now we need to add the credential that's going to allow us to SSH to the remote host uh, in order to copy that information. So we would once again do credentials. This time we're looking for a machine credential. And then here's that credential. You may have just created it. Uh, I've already had mine I showed you. So we're going to add that as well. Very important step. You have to have all the credentials that it's going to need uh, to run on the remote machines inside the credentials here uh, as selected. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do uh, is make sure that we have the privilege, privilege escalation uh, selected so we can run everything as root. Uh, we're going to save that. It's going to save our template. So let's just go back to templates. Let's find that template. And here's my template and let's run it. So as it runs, uh, we're going to be able to kind of see the output. And what we're looking for is that green successful. So I'm going through here and we can see uh, it's being successful. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit because I've got it zoomed in so it's easier for you to see. As you can see, once again, we got the successful. That's what we were wanting. Uh, we can look at all the different uh, parts of it and it ran successfully. It ran on private remote, which is what we specified this time. Uh, OK for change to because it did uh, copy the repository over. We can go into that um, that computer and just look. So I'm in the temp directory over here. Uh, I can do an ls backslash or for a1 and look and say, okay, there's a lot in there. Let me see if it's actually the Python collection is there and it is. And there's the files uh, that we copied over from Git. Uh, and then let's just double check that we didn't have a problem with the authentication. So I and I can go into the settings. I can look at SSH. Uh, and there we go. Here's that key that I just added. And we can see that it was successfully used. So we know that the remote repository um, was validated on Git. But then we use the Ansible automation platform to copy that repository over to the remote host. Uh, so that does it for today. Uh, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And we'll talk to you all later, nerds.